Hello beautiful people of the internet. Welcome back to another episode of my BMW E46 drift build. Um, on this episode, I'm gonna be fitting up a drift stick. That's what the cool kids call it, isn't it? A drift stick, something like that. Anyway, yeah, gonna be fitting up a hydraulic uh, handbrake. So, gonna be fitting it up in line um, with the original braking system. I'm not gonna be putting dual calipers on there or anything fancy like that. Um, but yeah, bit of a story with this hydraulic handbrake. I've actually had a lot of dramas um, trying to get the right setup with the master cylinder. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. So I bought this um, handbrake setup with this master cylinder off of eBay. So I got uh, this one here. As you can see, it's got the same master cylinder as this one. So I bought it because the picture here um, says that this is the input and this is the output. Um, so basically this cylinder here is what I was looking for when I was buying the handbrake because this is what the uh, the Willwood cylinders look like, um, kind of the schematic. So the in is this one and then the out is that one and also um, 7 16th inlet at the at the back and 3 8 inlet at the front so that's why I bought this one here but when this arrived and it kind of looks like this as you can see the um, the ports are sticking straight up whereas on this the back port sticks straight up but then this port faces kind of on an angle here and then if I pop these plugs out, not sure if you can actually see it, but um, that hole there is smaller than that hole there. So that thread there is 3.8 and that one there is 7.16. But if you look at this diagram here, it says the 716 inlet is um, at the back and then the 38 inlet, uh, sorry, outlet is at the front. So it's completely opposite. Um, and also, basically the way that um, you want these cylinders to work is your brake, um, your brake line that comes from your master cylinder on your car the original line wants to come into this inlet and then um, it can bypass through the cylinder and then go out there and go to the rear calipers, right? But with this setup the way that it is, it doesn't work like that because inside there, um, it's actually blocked off the way that the mechanism works. So this cylinder wouldn't even work if, um, if we used it, you know, the opposite way to the way that this diagram shows. Now the next um, thing that I found was the master cylinder. As you can see there's one bolt here and then there's one bolt here. So the thread is actually in this housing because if you have a look in here, if you can see it, but there's no thread in this. This is the open bit. Right, so the thread is in this, so you bolt the master cylinder to this. If I, if I go ahead and pull this bolt out here, watch what happens. All right, so that bolt's out now. This top bolt is still in. Now watch what happens. just falls out so basically it's only held on with one bolt and as you can see this bolt is still in here because that's where the thread is so I went I went back to them and I told this told them that it's completely wrong 
Um, I said, the master cylinder is different to the one that you showed in the photos. I said, it also doesn't bolt up. And they came back to me saying, no, it is the one in the photos because they're right. It is the one in the photos, as you can see there. Um, it's it's that, that one in the photos there, but I bought it for the schematic, the way that the schematic says here, and it is not the same as that. So basically, this is useless. So all pretty fucking frustrating so far. Um, so what I have to do is I basically um, have to buy, well, I had to buy another cylinder, right? But all the cylinders are on there. They were the Willwood ones, which are like 150 bucks. And I already paid 100 and I think 35 bucks for this, this setup already. Um, so I didn't want to go ahead and buy another thing that was going to be $300 because I could have just bought one already set up um, with the Willwood cylinder on it. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and bought another cheaper um, kind of Chinese um, handbrake or yeah, hydraulic handbrake setup that already has the master cylinder on it that I need. So basically this one here um, it comes with it comes with the proper master cylinder that I need. Um, if I go across, as you can see, bam, there's the same schematic as the other one that I showed you before. So I bought I bought this one here um, so that I can use it onto this one here. But there was another problem. All right, so I've taken this other cylinder off that, uh, that other handbrake assembly. So as you can see, this hole here is bigger than this hole here. So this is the 7 16 hole, and this is the 3 8 hole. So I went ahead and, um, what did I do? Oh yeah, so that's the other thing, right? So in here, these threads are different, as I was saying. One's 3.8, um, so it's actually 3.8 by 24, and this one is 7.16 by 20. So if you have a look on here, 7.16 by 20 and 3.8 by 24. So the threads are different, but also inside there, if you can see how the pipe will seal on the taper down there. So the back one there is actually a um, inverted flare one. And this one here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's the other way around. So it's a bubble flare. So I'll show you what I mean by um, the inverted flare and the bubble flare. So I've made up a couple of pipes here. Um, this one here to the right is an inverted flare and then the one on the left here is a bubble flare. So as you can see they kind of, they look different. So the one on the right is inverted, the taper goes in and then this bubble flare on the left, it goes outwards. So basically <clears throat> this one, the inverted one goes down the back here, the bubble one goes in the front here. So that's pretty annoying because they have to be different. So you have to get different fittings to go over um, over this to screw into here to make it seal. So I uh, I've bought some um, some fittings here. So this one here is seven sixteenths by the twenty four, and it's to suit three sixteenths hard line. So this line here is three sixteenths. Um, but buying this, um, I ran into a bit of problem with these. Um, so I've got, I've got this fitting here. This is the seven sixteenths um, <clears throat> by 24 inverted flare. Um, so it's gonna go at the back here. Um, and, I'm not sure exactly what the go is. 
So I'm going to screw this into uh, the back here. And as you can see, it only went a few threads. And that is loose there. But that is not allowed to be loose there. It's got to be nice and tight so that it seals down in there on the taper. And it doesn't matter if I nip that up a couple of turns with the um, with a spanner, this is still loosey-goosey. So I don't know what was going on there. Um, I went back and forth with the the people on eBay about this one, about how this threads <clears throat> this thread here um, isn't working. Um, and the thing is, like, I got a 7 16 um, by 24 bolt and the bolt would screw into here. So I was like, oh, what the fuck? Maybe the thread isn't right in here. So what I've actually had to do is, with, with this, I had to run a tap over it, or, or a die, I should say. So the die is opposite of the tap, so the die will make an um, external thread. Um, so I've run a die over that to clean up the threads, and I'm not sure if you can tell the difference between these two, but um, yeah, anyway, I cleaned up the threads on this and, and cut a little bit off, um, and then screwed it in. As you can see already, it's already going down a lot more than the other one, and that's hand tight, and that barely moves now. So when I nip that up, that is actually gonna seal the way that it's supposed to. Um, yeah, so that was a fun journey. Um, the other thing was, with this front one, because it's a bubble flare, um, you can't use the same, um, you can't use the same inverted uh, style nut um, to screw that screw that down into here because not only does this have to seal inside here but the back of this has to seal on the nut here so if that's not right then it won't seal so you have to get different style nuts and in Australia um, I couldn't find any nuts anywhere to fucking um, to buy to suit that Right, so I actually had to buy uh, these from America. So this is 38 by 24, which is this front port here, and it's to suit a bubble flare 316 line. So I'll just show you uh, what that looks like. So I got one of these out here. Um, as you can see, it is a little bit different sizing to this one. So this is the 7 16 by 24 and this is the 3 8 by 20. So this one here screws into here like so. Nicely like that. And then that's going to accommodate the bubble flare um, pipe to go into the front there. So I've got my two um, my two proper fittings. Now I bought these off eBay as well from this, this company here, Brake Hoses Unlimited. They're in America. And I bought a pack of 10 because the shipping was gonna be like 30 bucks for one fitting at $2. So I bought 10. So if you're in Australia and you're having the same drama with everything here, um, reach out to me and I'm happy to uh, flick you one of these. Um, so yeah, I bought some more just in case anyone in Australia wanted to um, Was having the same drama as me and they needed help. So after rooting around with all these different fittings and fucking Different cylinders and back and forth on eBay and waiting for parts from America and all that kind of stuff um, I realized that on the Wilwood cylinders They come with this adapter in here so as you can see here, 3 8 by 24, but this adapter here changes it from bubble flare to inverted flare. So I could have just bought, um, I could have just bought some inverted flare nuts um, in Australia to do that if I just bought a Wilwood cylinder. Um, but it is $153 for that cylinder. So like I was saying before, 
I didn't want to um, buy this and then buy this because it was going to end up being $300. Um, but I found online that if I just bought, um, I bought a, a handbrake setup that already had a Willwood thing on it, it was like 280 bucks maybe. And I should have just gone with that because um, it probably would have, been would have been cheaper than fucking around buying like this was, this ended up being like 60 bucks Australian for all of these as well as shipping. Um, and then, you know, I paid 150 for that. Then I paid another 50 for that. And just the time and the muck around for it. And then maybe, because this is a Chinese cylinder, it might fail <laughs> fairly soon anyway. And I'm probably going to buy a Willwood cylinder to replace it. So, yeah, basically, I should have just probably just spent the fucking money at the start to buy a good um, handbrake setup. And then I wouldn't be in this predicament and you're probably wondering why um, I just don't buy one of these adapters and that's because they don't sell these adapters in Australia and the only place I could find them online was on Amazon and they didn't ship to Australia and also they just that fitting was like 50 bucks Australian I think so that's why I didn't buy that Alrighty, so you've probably seen this a million times on YouTube, but I feel like explaining it anyway. So when you're fitting up, when you're fitting up a hydro in line with the rear brakes, um, it is different from an ABS car to a non-ABS car. So mine's an ABS car, so I'm gonna explain how that works. So basically, you've got your master cylinder here, so when you push your foot on the brake, um, fluid goes into the ABS, um, into the ABS module. So that's the front line there and that's a rear line. And then out of the ABS module, um, the fluid gets transferred down to each wheel individually. Um, so the ABS module works out um, how much fluid to push down there, depending on um, if a wheel's skidding or not. So anyway, with this, um, to put in the drift stick, what we have to do is we're going to put it in line with the back brakes. So basically what we have to do is we have to uh, cut both brake lines like so. And then we're going to put T pieces in and we're going to, we're going to T in here like so. And then we're going to come out of the T piece and then we're going to go to the inlet on the uh, drift stick. Then we're going to put another T piece here. And then we're going to come out of that. And then we're going to go to the out on the drift stick. So basically, the way that works is when you put your foot on the brake, um, the fluid will come down this line through the drift stick and then back down um, to the rear wheels uh, so that you can use your normal braking and the rear brakes still work. And then with the drift stick, because there's fluid inside the cylinder, um, when we pull the drift stick, it pushes fluid out the outlet, down, and then to the rear brakes. So that's how that works. And because you've cut, um, because you've cut these lines like this, and you've made them an individual line, uh, now the ABS will not work in the rear, but you don't need that anyway because you don't use ABS while you're drifting, because you turn it off. Um, and I'm not going to show you the non-ABS um, way to do it because that's not what I'm doing. If you want to find that out, there's plenty more videos on the YouTubes to look at that. Alright, now that I've showed you that, I'm going to run through all the parts that I've got that is going to make all this happen. So, yeah, as I showed you before, I've got my uh, male tube nuts, 3 8 by 24 bubble flare to suit a 316 line which that one goes in there. Then I've got my um, 716 by 20 inverted flare to suit a 316 line, which goes in here. And then I've got my T-pieces. So they're the T-pieces that I was talking about in that little diagram back there. So I've got these. These are 3.8. 
um, by 24. So they are inverted, inverted flares. And then, so I have two of those, because I need two of those for the back there. And then I have a bunch of uh, tube nuts that are gonna screw into here. So these obviously are um, to suit a 3 16 tube and they are 3 8 by 24 thread. Um, and the last thing I've got is, I don't know, 25 foot of 3 16 steel line. I went with the steel line um, because apparently brass can swell a little bit or copper, sorry, I should say. So I just went with the steel stuff. So, and also, yeah, the stainless steel stuff, I think is a little bit harder to, um, to flare the ends and stuff. So I just went with the steel stuff because it's easy to flare, easy to mold, and also it won't, um, it won't swell or anything like that over time. So yeah, now I've showed you all this stuff. Now we can go getting to putting everything together and working out where I'm gonna fit this up into the car. Now I can actually get this bolt in here and bolt it up how it's meant to bolt up. It's not like before where you can't actually get that fucking bolt in there. Now let's try and get this thing in the car. Righty, so I want to fit the uh, hydro up in here. Obviously, need to work out exactly where to put it so that it's not in the way of shifting gears or um, steering. Um, so yeah, obviously going to have to also cut out um, some of this to work out or to make room, sorry, to to mount this up. So yeah, I'm gonna work that out now. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna mount it up in this position here. So pretty much, yeah, I've gotta cut out that part of the console there. Um, so I can make up a bracket and have it sit down in there. So I'll probably have to cut down um, Probably have to cut down here as well, open this up and cut down through here. So I'm going to do that now. All right, I'm just going to use the angle grinder to cut this out. Righty, so I've got to cut this metal tab out of the way as well because it's in the way. Um, but I think what I might do is actually just cut it back as far as I can to that bolt, that nut, that bracket there, because I still want to keep this frame. Um, so yeah, I want to keep it so I can screw it into this little bracket here so I'm going to cut it back as far as I can to that um, so it opens up that area a bit more for me to work with. So I've decided I'm just going to cut this back here so that there's not this bit all flapping around all loose here so I'm just going to cut it back to this line here. Alrighty got that cut down now we've got plenty of room we can try and figure out where we're going to put our drift stick. Actually before we figure that out I'm gonna to have to cut this carpet out because it is in the way. All right, got that carpet cut out and I've been mucking around with uh, looking for a spot to fit this up for a little bit now. And I think I'm gonna to have to uh, actually remove this part of the dash and then cut this back a little bit more so that I can get 
this to fit in a bit closer to the front of the car because otherwise the handbrake comes down and hits on it. So yeah, all right, I'm gonna cut all that out now and then I'll come back after that's cut out. Alrighty, so got a fair bit more cut out of there, cut a bit out a bit more carpet as well. So this can actually go up into the dash a fair bit further. Actually, I think one of those holes is gonna line up with that. So I might be able to put a, uh, a nut cert in there and just bolt it straight on that hole and then work out something else. So do have to keep it really straight because the handbrake will hit on the master cylinder. And I wanted it straight anyway. I wanted to be pulling straight back, not kind of on an angle like that. I have seen some people kind of fit them up on an angle like this, and then you're kind of pulling the lever on an angle, which probably doesn't matter too much, but I would like it to be coming back as straight as possible. There's one little thing. Um, when you go into fifth, which is probably barely ever gonna happen, you hit your fingers on this bit here, but on this, it's got um, it's got a screw here, so I'm gonna undo that and see if I can clock this down so my little poor fingy doesn't hit that. Alrighty, so just trying to figure out where this goes. Um, if I do have it nice and straight, then um, the issue I'm having is that if anyone shorter wants to drive the car, the seat won't actually come forwards because it's gonna hit on the um, hit on the drift stick so if i have it on that angle like that i can still get the handbrake down but i also have all this room so that i can slide the seat forward if i have to or not if i have to but if someone shorter comes into the car all right so i've got a bunch of these uh m8 allen key headed bolts that uh go into here so then we can mount the drift stick so now i've just got to um i'm going to put a nut cert in there and then um screw it in and then i'm going to be able to work out where which angle i want and then work out how to make up the rest of the bracket Enjoy the Righty, now I've got my uh, nut set in there. She screws in. So I can pop this in and work out my positioning. Alrighty, so got that one bolt in there. So now I can work out uh, what angle I need to put this bad boy on so it clears everything. Alrighty, so that looks good there. Just gonna mark the second hole that we need to put a nut set in. Whoops. Let's put a shit ton of ink down there. Um, so yeah, can't really work out where I'm meant to fucking drill that hole. All right, I'm gonna try a little different tactic this time. Just gonna use this center punch. Right, got me whole center punched there, so now I'm gonna drill it out and put another nut cert in. Alright, got that other nut cert in. Now the test will be, will, will this line up? Alrighty, looking pretty good. 
that front one's in, so that one back one's lining up. Now I'll just try and get the bolt in. Righty, got those two bolts tightened down, sitting good. Just enough clearance here for the handbrake. So, um, it's still a little bit flimsy. So I'm gonna have to make up some brackets that pick up um, that uh, these holes on the side here. One at the front, one at the back there. So I might have to make up some brackets that come off here and then screw into there just to uh, eliminate any of that free play and to sturdy it up a bit. Alrighty, so I've cut myself a bit of plate and the idea with this is gonna be to go here and then I'm gonna mark some holes, drill and tap it, and then I'm gonna trace around uh, the body of this drift stick and then trim up the edges so it's all nice and neat. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna actually weld it to the transmission tunnel and then that's gonna uh, make it all nice and rigid. Alrighty, so for some reason my M8 taps are missing. Maybe I broke them fucking years ago, I'm not too sure. So probably just gonna have to run the nut certs in that plate instead of drilling and tapping a hole. Righty, got those drilled out to size. Now I can go ahead and uh, put the nut certs in. Alrighty, got those nut certs in there all nicely. Now it's time to see if she lines up. All right, got them in. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna trace around this and then cut, the, uh, cut it with the angle grinder so it all meets up nice and flush around here and looks pretty. Alright, now I've got that all cut up, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grind back all the paint on the tunnel here so then I can uh, weld to it. Alrighty, so got all that cleaned up, I've got uh, my plate all cleaned up, I'm going to assemble it all back together and then I can tack weld it in and then uh, remove it again and then finish welding the plate in. Alrighty, now I've got that uh, tacked in there. I can pull it back out and finish welding it. Alrighty, now the plate is all welded in. What I want to do is I want to refit up the um, the stick 
and then make sure that it's nice and sturdy. Otherwise, I might have to put a brace from here down to here or something. I'm not sure yet, but uh, we'll see. So we've got it back in now. Um, it's pretty solid. There's a little bit of, there's a, still a little bit of flex in it. You can see that. So, this plate here, when I move the handle sideways, it flexes up a bit. Because it's basically just welded to this sheet metal here, so it's still a little bit flimsy. So what I'm thinking of doing is, so I'm thinking about just getting a plate like this, and then putting it here like so. So, welding it to this, and then welding it to the tunnel here, and then that should strengthen it all up. Alrighty, so I've got that little uh, brace welded in there, but to be honest, I don't think it's actually done a great deal, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's still flexing quite a bit. I just think that it would need to be a bigger brace maybe down to the floor or something. But um, yeah, anyways, that's all good. Gonna leave it like that. Sorry about the sun, by the way. It keeps reflecting off all the shiny fucking bits. Um, basically, the sun is right behind me and I can kind of block it with my back, but yeah. Um, anyway, I'm gonna pull this out and then give it a bit of a spray paint with the undercoat that we know and love on this channel. Alrighty, there we go. Paint's all dry. Now time to chuck the stick back on. Hopefully, for the last time. Alrighty, so got it back in. Now the next thing to do is run the lines. So I need to get under the car, so I'm gonna jack up the car. The next morning. Alrighty peeps, it's the next day. I've got the car jacked up in the air. Um, now what I'm gonna do, so I wanted to change my brake fluid, but I've been waiting for this moment because um, when I cut the lines underneath the car, the brake lines, uh, the brake fluid's going to keep dripping out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck this out um, so that when it drips out, it only drips out a little bit. And then I'm going to put new stuff in at the end once everything's done and then bleed the brakes up. Alrighty, now I've got that sucked out. I've got to go underneath the car and work out where I'm going to run my brake lines. Alrighty, so after a fair bit of dicking around and humming and ahhing, I've decided to run the lines um, through the transmission tunnel here. So this is the left side of the car, so the front of the car is that way. So I want to run them out of here and then through this original uh, little bracket here, so then they can come down and then meet up with the lines down here. So to do that I need to drill a hole in the transmission tunnel. Alrighty so got my holes drilled and I've even put some rubber grommets in there so when I pass through that through it doesn't uh, rub on the transmission tunnel there. Alrighty now it's time to feed uh, my hard line in and then I've got to cut I've got to cut these two brake lines here that go down to the back so I can put my T pieces in. So to cut my line, I'll be using this little uh, pipe cutter here. Alrighty, so I got my first line cut. As you can see, it's still pissing out a bit. So what I'm thinking of doing is staggering the cuts. So as you can see, this one's here. And then I'm thinking about cutting this one um, up here a bit. Because what I want to do is, I want to slip this on like that. And then if I cut this one up here a bit, I can bend it around to go into there. And then this port here will go to my handbrake. 
and then I'll be able to do the same one, the same thing with the with the other T piece and the other lines because they'll be already staggered from the cuts that I've just done. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll work out. I just need to work out how far up here I need to cut uh, my second line. Alrighty, so I've got my second line cut, and as you can see, this one here I've uh, bent it around. So what the plan is to do is to uh, slip the T-piece on this one here and then this one will go into here and then um, yeah so this one will go into here and then out of here will this will go to the brake uh, the drift stick all right now I can uh, flare the tubes so I've got my uh, flaring tool here this one is an inverted flare tool so that's going to do the inverted flares to go into the T-pieces underneath the car. There she is, all flared up. All right, now I've got the, that flared, I'm gonna put the T-piece in and then hook up one line that comes from the drift stick. Little tip, make sure you do the flaring before you do the bending because with the bend there, there's not enough room for the tool to go on. So make sure you do the flaring before the bending. Another little tip, just make sure your nut is all the way up here before you bend it. Because if it's back here and you bend it, you won't be getting it back over here. Alrighty, so got my hard line in from the uh, hydro. So as you can see, this is the two back brake lines. They're coming into each other or coming into the T-piece. And then that's going out and that's going to go to the outlet on the hydro. So um, I'm going to do this one, put the T-piece on this, run the hard line and then tidy all this up and then I can go up the top and uh, flare the, the pipes at the top and then install them into the cylinder on the hydro. Alrighty, now I'm just flaring my first tube. So this is gonna be the one at the front, which is the bubble flare. So gonna uh, flare that one up now and then gonna put the next hard line in and by the time we come back, it should be all in. Alrighty, got our hard lines into the master cylinder on the drift stick, put a nice little P-clamp down here to hold it. These are all tucked in behind the, uh, the carpet here. And I'll go underneath and I'll show you what it looks like underneath. Alrighty, so just showing you underneath with it all finished up. See, all these two pieces, well, not all of them, two of them. Put the lines back in the bracket here, line back in the bracket here. So they run out, across here. Got another P-clamp here, where I just picked up a bolt that holds this heat shield on. That goes up here. And they travel up there and into the firewall. Ah, firewall, fucking transmission tunnel. All right, topped up the reservoir with new brake fluid. And now I'm just flushing out all the old fluid. Um, so then I can bleed the brakes and have all fresh shit in this system. Alrighty, brakes are all bled. We had one tiny little leak coming out of this fitting here. So I pulled it back out and the, um, the, what do you call it? The flare, the flare wasn't sealing properly on this. So when I put it back together, I uh, pushed that down, make sure it was seating um, basically in the middle of the hole, then tightened that up and gave it a really good nip up and now she's all good. So gonna give it a run up on the stands and see if the hydro works. Alrighty, 
time to get the car off the stands and give it a road test. The next morning. Alrighty people, it's another new day. Got the car off the stands and now I'm gonna take it for a road test. Alrighty folks, there you go. She's all good, works perfect. Um, the brakes still work and everything, so that's that's a bonus. Um, yeah, obviously I couldn't test it, um, you know, fully going sideways or anything like that because I'm just testing it in my street and there's nowhere around here to go and kind of test it properly. So I'm gonna have to wait until uh, a drift day opens up. Um, so yeah, last thing that I gotta do is um, mount up all these switches because now they don't have their positions here and also the traction control one here um, so i think i'm going to mount this one here and then this one in here like this so yeah that's uh that's it for the video folks um hope you enjoyed the video if you did like it please give it a, a thumbs up and uh, if you've got any comments, put them in the comments below. Um, any questions like that, put them in the comments below. So yeah, I know it was a really long video, guys. Um, I did just want to put all the troubles that I had um, with the Hydro in this video, just so it can help other people out, um, or even stop people from buying that Hydro, um, so they don't make the same mistake or have the same dramas that I did. So yeah. Um, again, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.